Uh, no, I would like to introduce you to Abby Gates, who's Lucas's mom. And Lucas's dad, Gary, has also been very involved and actually would have been here today, but he's out of town just now. Abby, could you tell us a bit about Lucas's history, um, such as his diagnosis and his first school experience, and also a bit about your family configuration? Sure. First of all, Lucas is our first child. He is 12 years old. We also have a daughter who is eight. Lucas has Asperger's syndrome, which is high functioning autism. And his younger sister, Sadie, um, was born with Down syndrome. Um, Lucas was diagnosed two months before we were heading into grade one. We were always told by the pediatricians that he was just speech delayed, he was immature. The typical story I think that every parent gets when they go in concerned about differences in their child. Anyway, so we sent Lucas to a school called Small Talk, which was amazing for children um, with speech delays and some behavioral issues too we saw there. Um, we had a bit of both at that time. Um, there is where I learned, I went to one talk once and it absolutely changed our lives because I heard the word social stories and I raced home from that talk and drew out six certain situations step by step through these situations on just a piece of paper, stick man, going to a birthday party, the next page, driving to the birthday party, so on and so forth. Um, that was our first sort of taste of um, Lucas's differences because it made sense to him. So I knew there was something more than just a speech delay, seeing that our son was able to relate more so with this picture that I had drawn rather than what we had said to him. We went ahead and hired a psychologist. We had to do a private assessment because time was running out, school was starting, and we knew that our little boy would no way be able to handle going into school by himself. He absolutely needed assistance of some sort. We knew nothing. We're brand new parents to the um, special needs world. Um, we got diagnosed with high-functioning autism. Um, it did take us back, I must admit, we were a little surprised, um, didn't know anything about autism. My, um, my viewpoint about autism at that time was a child that would just sit constantly and rock like everybody else's. But as we all know and as we've come to learn, it's a humongous spectrum. Um, you do see similarities amongst children with Asperger's, um, but they're all different, just like you and I. It's all different. Um, so. We started Sir William Osler with full-time assistance and um, it was challenging. It was extremely challenging because our son could not communicate through words, could not communicate um, other than hitting children, um, just doing really strange behaviors that are not appropriate for uh, a grade one child. Um, so that was the beginning of our journey and my research into our new Asperger's world. My name is Elaine McGauley and I have a grade 6, 7 homeroom class. Luke has been in my class for the last two years. Some of his classmates were with him, have been with him since uh, grade 1, so they know him quite well. I found uh, throughout the last two years those classmates are quite supportive of Luke. Um, they're with him, uh, praising him, supporting him when he does something well or when he tackles something new. And they ignore his tantrums when they occur. Um, Luke, Luke's goal this year is to become a little more independent. Um, he's relied heavily on his SVA support since he's been here. And now we're finding that occasionally he'll be able to work without the SEA for one full period. And that's what our goal has been. Luke is the type of student who can be very enthusiastic about things that he likes to do. He enjoys doing PowerPoint presentations and uh, giving them in front of the class. He's very knowledgeable about current events and this is obviously something he discusses at home.
Hi, my name is Amy Finch and I'm an SSW. Um, I've worked with Lucas Gates for the past three years. I can honestly say that I've learned just as much from him as I've helped him learn. I found that showing an interest in whatever he may want to talk about has helped him to trust me and allow me to help him. When I first started to work with him, we had more off days than on. But as time went by, we got to know each other and respect one another. And everything got easier, not just for me, but for Lucas as well. Luke is very sensitive to change. So this year, we have worked towards making the transition to high school go as smoothly as possible. One thing we did was to go to visit McGee. And during our visit, we took pictures of some staff, the principal, and the counselor. We put them together in a folder so that he would get to know the staff over the summer break before he went to McGee. This is the McGee book we made. Here's a picture of Lucas in front of the library at McGee. This is a picture of his grade 8 counselor that will continue on all through high school. We also have a picture of the vice principal and the secretaries in the office. Hello, my name is Diane Borthwick and I am the LAC teacher and low incidence case manager at Ozra School. This video is about Lucas, who is a boy in grade 7 who was diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome many years ago. This video is also about a process, a process that many of the adults in Lucas's life undertook to try to help him attain better skills to make him better prepared for high school. Now, ever since Lucas came into our school in kindergarten, we have seen steady growth and improvement. Yes, we've had our share of kerfuffles, and the word kerfuffle is one that Lucas's mom uses to describe any upset that Lucas might have. The dictionary describes a kerfuffle as disorder, uproar, and confusion, and that would aptly describe what we had gone through with Lucas over the years. But those kerfuffles were usually short-lived. We would go into them and out of them within a day or so. For whatever reason, when Lucas got to grade 7, he went into a period of extended kerfufflement. And it was that that prompted our uh, principal, Megan McCarthy, to phone the low incidence consultant, Rosita Tam, and ask her to come to our school on an emergency basis. Rosita arrived at our school the day before the winter break, and she brought with her this book, which is called Navigating the Social World. It is especially designed for children with Asperger's Syndrome, high-functioning autism, or related disorders. She showed this book to Lucas, who was very interested in it, and in fact, he signed a paper that said he would like to learn more. When I read this book, I liked it because it wasn't written just for special education teachers. It was also written for classroom teachers, SSWs, the counselor, parents, anybody who is working with children with Asperger's Syndrome and trying to help them develop social skills. So, in January, we, that is the educators and parents in Lucas's life, undertook a series of strategies to try to help him some of these strategies were from the book, some were from ourselves, and some were from Dr. Minnies, who is a child psychiatrist who works in the Oak Ridge area, and he had been working with Lucas for many years. Some of these strategies worked, some were, uh, had potential, and some of them really didn't work for Lucas at all. So as I give you a brief description of these strategies, I'd like to classify them as the ones that didn't help Lucas, the ones that had possibilities, and the ones that really had some success with him. Now, when I first met with Lucas, I wanted to establish a little goal setting, you know, why we were doing this and what the whole purpose of entering into this process was. So I showed him this little map, but we made it up sort of together. And here's Ozer School and McGee High School and the road that we were going to try to take so that he would be better prepared for high school. Lucas is a very visual learner and he liked this map 
He added words to it and became quite excited about it. He could see where we were going. These detours that you see on it did not exist in the original map. They were added later when we discovered we were off on some kind of detour and trying to get back on again. Another thing that I talked over with Lucas at the very beginning of the process was a little bit about how the human brain works. And that is, <coughs> here's a picture of the brain, and the boss part is at the front, and I told him about the emotional part of the brain that's located further back. Now the boss part, I told him, was responsible for good decision making, for learning, for making rational decisions, and the emotional part, when it became excited, could send out chemicals that would physically block his access to the front part of his brain. That is, if he were upset, then he would not be able to learn and he would not be able to make good decisions. This again, Lucas seemed to understand right away and he's the one who labeled this as the boss and the block boss and he signed it and he said that he, he, you know, he was beginning to understand what we were going to do. Uh, I, I told him that the whole thing was so that he could try to calm this emotional part of his brain so that he could have better access to the boss part of his brain. So there we started. Now, in navigating the social world, the first part, which was the only part that we ever had time to undertake in the six months that we had, is about better understanding one's emotions and dealing with one's emotions. And the book said the place you start there is with a very positive emotion, which would be happiness or pleasure. It said to start with a pleasure book, which we did. And Lucas made a pleasure book. Actually, he started it with his mom at home. And they put in all the things at home that made him happy. Pictures of family events, loving notes, anything that was very positive. And then the school added their things too, with uh, working in areas of competence, like doing the PA announcements. Uh, there's also uh, candy wrappers and things like that in here. Anything that makes Lucas happy. Pleasure book as a strategy, I would say, had potential because Lucas, when he was looking at it, it really did fill him with happiness and calm him down. It wasn't fully successful, though, because he never arrived at the point where he would search out the pleasure book and use it as a tool himself. It had to be an adult bringing the pleasure book to him. So I'm going to put the pleasure book under one with possibilities. Another thing that came right near the beginning was the introduction of a strategy to help Lucas calm himself down. We needed something right away because his emotions were actually stopping him from doing any work at school. So the one that we introduced from the book, Navigating the Social World, was Walk No Talk. And in this one, uh, when I was talking to Lucas about it, um, he understood right away and became very visual. He drew this little picture of someone walking in anger, absolutely flowing at the bottom of the feet in the form of angry little faces down here. Uh, the walk no talk, we had to adapt it a bit. It seemed to be an intuitive thing that when you have a lot of adrenaline going on that you could use something physical to help get rid of that emotion. We had to change it to the walk, no talk, no action, because Lucas was using so much body language as he walked that he was drawing attention to himself, and we knew that wouldn't go over well at high school. So we used the walk, no talk, no action for a long time, hoping that it would help him. In the end, however, we realized that not, it just didn't really help Lucas, because in fact, as Lucas walked, he became almost more agitated, and it built up in him, and it had the opposite effect as the one we were hoping for. So although this may be a good tactic for some students, as far as Lucas went, it didn't work. Somewhere near the beginning of the process, we realized that we needed more time as a group to communicate. We needed a time for the classroom teachers, the SSW, the parents, and myself to get together because some things were happening and we were all on different pages and didn't know exactly what, you know, we couldn't be consistent with Lucas. So this communication was something that we realized we needed. It was very short, 15 minutes a week, but a time when we could talk over what was working and what wasn't. Luckily, there was a time we could fit this in in the day 
uh, because there was an assembly every Monday at the beginning of the day and we could get together during that assembly time and talk over what was happening. I would say that this strategy was excellent, in fact invaluable, and that uh, without it, during a time of crisis it was absolutely essential. So I'm going to put it over here. Now, one thing that Navigating the Social World says is that you should not be asking a child such as this to comply unless you have a behavior mod program in place. So we tried coming up with one that would really suit Lucas, and we did this with the help of Dr. Minis. The one that we came up with looks like this. There are two sides. One side is gaining computer time, which Lucas really loves computers, he's very good at them. Um, and it was for appropriate behavior, which we defined with him, whatever was the appropriate behavior. On the other side was the consequence side, and that is if he was off task or refusing to do assignments, that he would have to make up that time at home. Uh, the interesting part to me was that both sides could be happening at the same time. So if Lucas were in the class and not drawing attention to himself, then he could be gaining those points. But if he weren't doing his work, then at the same time, he could be building uh, minutes that he would have to make up at home. I should mention that Lucas never saw the consequence side while he was at school because if he did see it, he would become so upset and obsessed by that it actually hindered his work and didn't help us. So the behavior mode program, I would say, is definitely a good strategy. And we did have to tweak the one that I just showed you, but I'll show you that at the end when it actually came about. I would put the behavior mode program as a successful strategy. Now, about this time, we re realized that Lucas still wasn't getting to his work and we were looking for something to motivate him to get started. One thing he absolutely loves is computers. And we had had trouble with computers when he was in grade five because he would get on a computer, it would be hard to get him off and he would be off task on the computer. So before getting a laptop computer for him, and this was purchased by the parents for his use at school for the rest of his school life, before this was purchased, we had to have a very strict contract with Lucas so that he would know exactly its purpose, who was to use it, and how it was to be cared for. Every adult who would have anything to do with the computer, plus Lucas, all signed this contract. <laughs> the laptop computer definitely has possibilities for Lucas. Uh, at Osler, however, we found that he didn't use it as much as we thought he would. Often the assignments were just simply easier to do on paper or in a different way. But I think it will be used more and more as he goes through school. So we'll put it here as possibilities and hopefully more. Um, about this time, too, we decided that Lucas actually needed to be thinking about high school, and in this case, it's McGee. So Lucas went with the SSW and his mom to visit McGee. One of the things that he did there was to make a McGee book, which was full of pictures of the people that he met and places that he was going to see at McGee's school. He came home from this visit and the other next other visits very, very of positive feelings about McGee. One of the things that he liked besides the people was the fact that the buzzer system at McGee is quite soft and that was a very important thing for him to know. So I would say that the McGee book <coughs> was a positive strategy. Now to take you back to navigating the social world, remember it was helping a child to understand and cope with their own emotions and it's the one that started with the pleasure book. After looking at one emotion like this, the book says to go into understanding different emotions and start to read body language. So we made a many emotions book. And this book, Lucas was very interested in taking part in the making of this book. The first emotion, as we discussed, was happy. 
And this is Lucas in an area of complete competence. He is very, very good at giving the PA announcements. He's a complete natural. Here's a picture of him doing that. And when he analyzed the body language, he saw that his skin was smooth, that he was smiling, his teeth were showing, and that he looked relaxed. Now, we were going to go on. He acted out a lot of emotions. All of these emotions are ones that Lucas had identified that he had experienced. So we were going to have a good look at them and see what they looked like. They were shy, disappointed, nervous, anxious, frustrated, angry, and proud. However, when I started doing this with Lucas, it became clear very quickly that Lucas actually read, reads body language and has a good understanding of this already. So it wasn't really necessary to go through this step. And the Many Emotions book was a strategy that was not really useful for Lucas just because he was already doing that well. I know a lot of Asperger's children don't read body language well, so it may be a good strategy for other children, just not for Lucas. So we have gone now through the pleasure book to the many emotions expanding the child's repertoire of emotions. Now the book says to zero in on one emotion again and to help the child understand that there are gradients of that emotion. So the emotion was anger and it used a device called the anger thermometer to help a child see how that there are actually different levels of that emotion. The anger thermometer, this is a black line master from the book, and it looked like this, <clears throat> with a, at the bottom there was, well, Lucas actually used this language, showing that there were no winds, everything's really calm, and then how the storm could build until he added 10 plus at the top for a hurricane, wild winds, and tornado. Uh, Lucas also drew a line right at three and a half, and he said that he was actually fine until he got to three and a half. Once he hit three and a half, however, his emotions would go right to the top. There was nothing in between three and a half and ten or ten plus. Now, uh, once he was using this thermometer and he understood the language right again, again it was visual and he is a very visual learner. So he picked up the language of the anger thermometer and was able to say, I'm at a 2, or this is a 10, I'm really at a 10. He used that language right away. I would say that the anger thermometer had possibilities for Lucas. Once we're at the point of understanding different levels of one emotion, the SSW tracked Lucas and tried to see exactly where uh, his anger thermometer was in school times, and she put down times when uh, what would trigger his his emotions and whether it was low stress, moderate stress, or high stress that he was feeling at the time. And from that, we took Lucas to a page in the book which showed several stress reducers. He highlighted the ones that he thought would work for him, and we categorized them into low, moderate, and high stress reducers. We talked about these, he seemed to intellectualize them very well. The problem was getting to him to use them in a real situation. So one attempt was made that we found during the communication time that Lucas's mom said he really enjoyed game boards and playing games at home, or board games. So I devised a very rough little uh, board game with him which had situations that Lucas had actually talked about that would bother him. So there were cards where he would pick up, read a situation, and then set his anger thermometer, and then from there choose a stress reducer that would work for that occasion. He really enjoyed playing this. I think it might have had more effect if we had played it more times. We just didn't have enough time slots that we could play the game that he could imagine being in those situations enough. But I would say uh, the stress reducers definitely have possibilities if he could get to the point where he would start to use them automatically. Now, at this point, when we were having uh, one of our meetings, we realized that we had tried all of these strategies and Lucas still wasn't settling to his work and he still had a lot of anxiety and, and anger in him 
uh, so we went to Dr. Minnie's and said, what do we do now? Now, Dr. Minnie's is a teller of stories. You can present a problem to him, and he'll sometimes reply with a story from which you draw your own conclusions. I want to tell you the story that Dr. Minnie's told to us in this case. And this is a true story about a boy who liked computers, and he also really liked TV. So every night, he would watch TV. And every night at 8.30, his parents would say, it's time for bed, would you please turn off the TV? And every night, this boy would refuse, so there was a huge kerfuffle. The pattern was going on day after day, and those parents asked Dr. Minnie, what do we do? Dr. Minnie said two things. One, action speaks louder than words. Don't just keep talking, do something. And two, try something different because you're in a pattern here you have to try something completely different if you keep doing the same response you'll keep getting the same thing back so that night or that day when the boy came home on his computer screen there was a sign that said today when we ask you to turn off the tv at 8 30 we expect you to do so and then in brackets within 10 seconds the evening came and the boy was watching TV. The parents came at 8.30 and said, it's time for bed, would you please turn off the TV? And as usual, the boy refused. This time, however, instead of a big kerfuffle, uh, when the boy refused, the parents simply went to the kitchen. They did something different. They had a cup of coffee and a nice chat. So the boy just knew something was up, something was different. He didn't know if he had won or not. He just didn't know what was going on. The next morning, when he got up, and went to school, the parents went to the TV, unplugged it, put it in their car, and took it away. Now, when we brought that story back and told it at one of the communication meetings, the classroom teachers knew immediately what to do. So this is what happened in Lucas's day. When he came to his class, on his, on his desk was a sign that said, when we ask you to do your assignments today, we expect you to get started immediately, and then in brackets, within one minute. His classroom teacher had also spoken to him what to do if something made him feel anxious, so he knew some stress-reducing tactics that he could use. However, when the assignments were given, we were into a real pattern here, and Lucas refused, as usual, to do his work. This time, however, there was no upset, there was no kerfuffle, uh, brought on by the SSW or the teachers, he was allowed not to do his work. So he knew that something different was happening, just didn't know where it would lead. At the end of the day, uh, the teacher, Mrs. McGauley, went to Lucas and said, Now, Lucas, you know, we asked you today, when we asked you to do an assignment, to start that assignment right away, within one minute, and you didn't. So, like any other student in this class, there's a consequence. And that consequence is a detention. Now, a detention is something that Lucas abhors. And we thought this for sure would bring on a major meltdown. Uh, and as a matter of fact, Lucas did try to leave the room, but the SSW just happened to be blocking the way. And the Mr. Fell, who's the science and math teacher, had shut the door between the two classrooms. So Lucas was stuck in the classroom. And to our surprise, he got over the fact he had a detention quite quickly. He still refused to do his work or declined any opportunity to do that. He offered to help change the date on the board. He looked out the window and saw the other kids playing and kind of regretted that he wasn't out there too. But he did serve his detention. The next day, would it have an effect? No. The next day, he again refused to do his work. However, he was on his way back to the classroom when he realized it was almost 3 o'clock, that he hadn't done his assignments, and now he knew what the consequence would be. So now he did have a major kerfuffle, and he had because he was in the hallway, he had kind of a school presence that day as he unlet some of his emotion about the thought of having a detention. However, he did end up back in the classroom and he did serve his detention. 
Now, for whatever reason, that seemed to be the turning point for Lucas. This attention was the part of the behavior mod program that made it work. Uh, to say it was just the detention that changed everything would be a little simplistic. And to say that this is the end of the process also would be untrue because, of course, the process is ongoing. However, at this point, Lucas became his old self again. And the kerfuffles that we had were short-lived, ones that he got in and out of fairly quickly. He started doing his work again and seemed a much happier person. We were very relieved and happy when Lucas got to this point because now we know that he is ready for the next stage of his education, that is high school, and that he can find success there. So I just want to say, well done Lucas, congratulations, and good luck in high school. Hello, my name is Lucas Gates. I am 12 years old. I'm in grade 7. And I'd like to introduce, and I have Asperger's syndrome. I'm, I'm going to introduce you to the autism journey. Okay, this is, um, welcome to our board. This is, this is three things we're learning about. This is one that we're doing right now. It's, it's the way to high school, if any of you are in grade 7. First of all, I, this is Ozer when we're leaving. First of all, I went off track at some point, and then I got back on. Then we got to the halfway point. When you get to when you get to the borders, that means that means you'll be um, half halfway there, right here. And when you're leaving halfway and entering high school, then um, when you enter high school, you're done. Okay, this is what I call block bus. Some in what happens in your brain if you're autism. Sometimes it bl um, blows up and um, has chemicals to block the boss part of your brain. It gets real challenging when that happens. Okay, this is uh, my pleasure books. I, you, I usually, it's things that you all, when you get crazy, you always look at this book and it's all about your favorite things. First of all, this is like, I love Mario. And, you know, um, lots of people will know that. No, this is when we had New Year's. Wait. Slurpees. Don't mind about that other one. P I do the PA announcement at my school, so so it's very rare to see to do it. And friends. So if any of you are wondering, this is a very good thing to do. Okay, this is what I call walk, no talk, no actions. This is when you get angry, go out of the classroom and start from a starting point. And then walk, um, walk around. This is my map of the um, map of my walk. And if you're angry, you can always go again. And then look at your pleasures book, like I shown you. Oh, okay. This is what I call the computer agreement. Lots of Asperger's kids love computers, so this is what you need to have. This uh, my all my signatures and all the teachers' signatures, especially the principal, my aide, my, one of my teachers and my mom. This, it, um, it's a tool for schoolwork and success. It's stored carefully in a special place where you need to hide it. And no one else is allowed to use a computer. Anyone else? Goodbye! Okay, this is what I call the anchor thermometer. This is what I call um, zero. You know what zero is. Nothing wrong. When you get up to one, it gets low limbs. Two midwinds. Midwinds is two and three, I meant. Hail is four. When I get up to mid four, boom! I get fly up like a rocket. But I'll tell you the others. Hail is four and five. Lightning storm is six and seven. Um, high winds eight and nine. Drop in thermometer very rare. It goes back down to four. Ten is wild winds tornado. 10 plus, woo, 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 hurricane. Okay, this is my other phenomenon. It, it eventually moves. You can create this at home. It can go up and down. It's very challenging, this one. And that's all we need to learn about this.
this is what I call school needs game. This is where we start off at home, and then we walk to school, dum dee dum dee dum, and then we put B. No problems, ta-da! That means nothing on the phenometer. That that's what we showed earlier. Then we move into period one. The kids are a little noisy, but the teacher asks them to be quiet them down, and they they do. A okay, woohoo! That's thumbs up. Period two, draw A. Oh, better keep this up. Congratulate computers, you feel great. Wow, my mom will get lucky day. Whoops, sometimes I slip around. B, recess. Ding, ding, ding. No problems. Two, okay, we're back. We're back at school. At first, everything is going okay. Then the kids are making noise, and the work is a lot. Uh, 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 uh. Walk, no talk, no actions. Like we told earlier. I'm gonna move it back down for later. Okay, now we move on to the um, what this means. The mild stress reducer is when it's low. That's the yellow, the white. Moderate is the moderate stress reducer is when it um, is in yellow. And uh oh, the real bad ones. High stress reducer. Look at pleasure. So we're continuing on. Period four. Okay, this is what I call computer points. This is what I this is what I get earned for it. In class, cra classroom, quietly calming brain and working at table in hall. This is my schedule for the day. If I'm um, two, three, 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 three. Three, three, three. If this is all, then bon the bonus has been awarded. While working with Luke, I've learned that he reacts best when I'm calm. I can be firm about something, but as long as I'm calm about it, he usually accepts it. Um, it's been a challenge working with Luke for the last two years, and I've learned a great deal about Asperger's. But it also has been a joy having Luke in the class. With working with Luke, I found that having patience has been the most important thing. Also not trying to take things personally and always speaking in a calm voice. Also, I found that when he gets upset, that if you just leave him be and give him time to calm down, he will. I also found that when he was upset, if he went for a walk or if I would go for a walk and both of us were calm, then we would get back together and work better. I wish Lucas all the best in high school. Hopefully he'll be as successful there as he's been here at Old You know, um... I wish there was one thing I could say that I could share with others and teachers and sort of give them an insight. I learn every day. I, I am taught by my son every single day something new. Lucas is a wonderful, wonderful young man and I couldn't be prouder of him. But I would never say it hasn't been a hard road because it has been a very, very difficult road and challenge we've gone. I've been seeing um, a child psychiatrist every month for the past um, seven years. Every month I go to see Dr. Menace, who has been my saving grace. I go in, he gives me strategies, we try them, they either fail, they either succeed, whatever. Um, there was a lot of failures um, with all our strategies, but you know what? You learn and you don't um, dwell on the failures. Um, like Dr. Menace always told me, you'll go up, 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 up and have so much succession. And one little step back, you think your whole world is falling apart, but it's not. It really is not. Um, it, it's been tough for Gary and I. Um, you know, with our daughter who has Down syndrome, um, socially she does so fine. And socially she is so accepted because she looks 
like she's got a difference. Lucas is such a typical looking child that he is regarded as either being spoiled or just a brat. Um, so, so misunderstood. Um, there's been so many looks I've gotten with Lucas, so many comments. Um, you've had to, I, I, along with Gary, have had to sort of form a hard shell around us. Even with our own family who loves us, we are a very close family. It's very difficult to understand some of the behaviors, um, some of the kerfuffles, like I call them, which happen quite often in large gatherings. Um, I always have said since having two totally different children with two totally different special needs is that you never judge a book by its cover because you look at Sadie who is the most precious little girl with Down syndrome who is so accepted in this world. Even if her behavior is inappropriate, it's so accepted because she looks like she has a challenge. And then there's Luke who tries so hard socially, so hard. and just gets shunned upon because they don't get it. They really don't get it. And I think for the rest of our lives, it's going to be a challenge for Lucas. He has a love of computers. He has a love of um, quite a few things in life. And yeah, it hurts me when I hear of all the birthday parties going on and um, all the kids going and doing their things and our guy is just coming home with no phone calls, no birthday parties. And then finally Dr. Minna said, is it hurting you or is it hurting him? And it is, it's hurting us. So get over it because if Lucas is fine with spending his time on his computer or having one of his cousins come and hang out, then it's fine. We don't all have to have 20 friends at all times, the phone nonstop ringing. Um, that's, that's one of the feelings that I think a, a parent um, like Gary and I, we, it took us a long time to sort of get over it and it still hurts when I see all of Lucas's cousins all getting so busy socially, they're all roughly the same age. It hurts, it really hurts. But you know what, I look at the face on my boy and he's smiling most of the time and he tells me all day long how much he loves us and when he does have kerfuffles, how sorry he is. How can you not be happy for a child like this. You know, I wouldn't change a thing on either of my children. And Lucas always says, why did I have to be born with autism? Why, why, why? And I tell him, we turned this around, Luke. We've turned it around to a gift because you do the announcements at your school, nobody else does. You do the PowerPoints, nobody else does. You have so many gifts, Lucas Gates. And if it weren't for you having Asperger's, which is a little part of you, you wouldn't have any of these loves. So. Just accept. We have to accept and teach everybody around us to accept. And it's a challenge, but I think every family has their challenges, regardless of special needs or not special needs, just different challenges. And um, it's just a, a non-stop work in progress. That's how I feel. But I love my children, and I wouldn't change a thing. Good luck. Okay, this is... Just remind yourself, you can do this. That, remind yourself, do, you can do this. That's all for now, folks. Good, good luck and goodbye.